right, here we go. Our next example is going to look at finding magnitudes of the resultants of two vectors. And keep in mind the resultant is essentially the sum of the two forces. So here's what the problem says. It says two forces of 15 newtons and 22 newtons act on a point in the plane. If the angle between them is 100 degrees, find the magnitude of the resultant force. So if those two forces are working together um, on the same object, on the same point, um, which direction and, and with how much force is that point going to be or is it going to be applied to that point? So Newtons is just a, a form of um, a measurement of force um, that's often used in physics. And let's take a look and try and set up a picture here um, to go ahead and help us solve out this problem. So um, what we're going to start with just some point. Um, I'm going to call it point P. And again, this is the point that these two new these two forces are acting upon. So we'll try to draw this thing somewhat to scale. Um, the first force is a 15 newton force, so we'll kind of go ahead and represent 15 newtons as maybe that length there. That's kind of arbitrary. You can draw them kind of as big as you want, but we'll label that 15 newtons. And again, somewhat to scale here. We know if the other force is 22 newtons, that one should be a little bit longer. Um, and again, we'll try to make these proportional. And we also know that the angle between these two forces is 100 degrees. So you know that looks like about 90 there. So if we go a little bit more, you know, we're looking at about 100 degrees in that realm. And then again, we do need to be probably a little over a quarter longer um, just to get it to the, our scale a little bit. So that one there would be our 22 Newton force. And when we're looking for these resultants here, the magnitudes of these, um, I, I really like to use the parallelogram method. We got to let's draw in that result in there. So we got the two methods: tail to tip or parallelogram. So the parallelogram method, we can just go tail to tip twice, move each vector to the tip of the other one, um, and we should set up a nice little parallelogram. So we'll kind of resemble this shape here, and then again, the result in of those two vectors would be from the initial point to where the two terminal points meet, um, and again, that's going to be then our resultant vector. So the vector we're trying to find the magnitude of is actually that one right there. Um, and if we go ahead, we'll just kind of try to get some color real quick. And we should be looking at finding the, the length of that vector then. So um, let's give it a name. Um, let's call it magnitude vector V. And that should be then what we're trying to solve for. Okay. So with the parallelogram method, the reason I like that one in this particular case is because we can look at some of those properties and hopefully be able to find a few extra pieces of information. So think back a few classes, back to your geometry class, and some of the properties of parallelograms you're going to want to remember are um, the fact that opposite sides are congruent. Okay. So in our drawing, that would mean that, hey, this one down here would also be 15 newtons, and this one up here would be 22 newtons. Okay. Um, all angles should add up to 180 degrees. And we forgot to mark that here, but let's go ahead and remember that the, the angle between the two vectors is 100 degrees total. Okay. So this angle here, this one is kind of important, actually, by a typo. It should be 360 degrees for all angles. Um, but the sum of this one here, this one, this one, and this one, all should add up to 360 degrees. Um, number three. Opposite angles are congruent, which means this angle down here, opposite, straight across from the 22 newton force to the 15 newton force, that would also be 100 degrees. And then probably one of the other important one here is that adjacent angles are supplementary. And that's kind of the key piece of information, because we don't know what either one of these angles is from the 15 newton to vector V or the 22 newton to vector N. We know their sum is 100. We don't know either one of those angles. However, using this idea that adjacent angles are supplementary, and adjacent meaning any two consecutive angles, so this one here and this one here, we should be able to label uh, a full angle. So using property four there, we would now know that this angle, if that one's 100 and it's supplementary, it means it's add up to 180, this angle here needs to be 80 degrees. Okay? And then if we think about this, we know a side, we know an angle, and we know a side. So that means we should be able to use either our law of sines or law of cosines to find vector V here. And it's actually going to turn out to be the law of cosine. So um, this is the side angle side case that we've just previously studied. 
So then if we want to find vector G, we should be able to set up um, a log cosine parabola. So to find the magnitude of vector G, which is the result in a wave two forces, we're going to go ahead and set up a log cosine. So we know the two sides here and the angle between them. To find the opposite side, that would be the magnitude of vector V squared is equal to, we know the law of cosine works, the sum of the two known sides squared, which will give us a 15 squared plus 22 squared, okay, minus 2 times each of the two sides times the cosine of the angle between them. Again, we're going to have to calculate from the V mobile. All right, so if we calculate this out, solve for magnitude of V, we will get the magnitude of our resultant. Um, so we're doing some quick calculations here. Um, let's go ahead and plug some of this into our calculator. 15 squared um, plus 22 squared will give us 709. Careful with this part. Remember, it's almost like we've got a grouping symbol here. Got to multiply before you subtract. So if we type all that in, we get two times 15 times 22 times um, cosine of 80, and that part will be negative 114. I'll go ahead and just use your calculator to avoid that rounding error. So it takes 709 minus that last answer up there, the 114.607. And that will tell us then that the magnitude of vector V squared, we're not quite done yet, is equal to 594.3839, if I'm rounding there. Um, but careful, I still don't want to round that. We do need to now take the square root of each side to get the magnitude of vector v. So we'll go ahead and take the square root of our answer there. Again, I'm using the calculator to avoid any rounding issues. We should get the magnitude of that vector, and it's going to be 24.38 newtons. Round that off a few dozen places, and that would be then our final answer. So if you can see here, a 15 newton force and a 22 newton force are acting 100 degrees apart. Um, the path of point P would, would be right here. Again, we don't quite know the complete orientation of this problem because they're kind of in space similar. But it, those two for Newton forces working together would produce a 24.38 Newton force. And again, you would know the path you know, would be a little closer to the 22 than the 15. Um, as far as the direction goes, just because it's going a little harder there. Um, and again, because there is such a big angle between them, you know, the, the forces aren't going to combine completely. You're going to lose some. They're almost like they're pulling apart or pulling away from each other and, and kind of counteracting each other in that case. So that should be our final answer, 24.38 newtons.